Hi there, my name is Mike McCready. I'm an instructor in the multimedia production program at Lethbridge College. Today we're going to learn how to make our 2D characters come to life using an amazing new product from Adobe called Adobe Character Animator. You can access Adobe Character Animator through your Spotlight search, as you see here, or you can access it through Adobe After Effects by going to the File menu and then clicking on Open Adobe Character Animator. One of the first things that we'll need to do is to create our puppet. And the easiest way to do that is to start with a puppet template. So go under File and go New Puppet in Photoshop. This will create a Photoshop template file that you can use to create your character. As you'll learn later in the tutorial, having your layers grouped and named properly is absolutely important. And this is the best way to ensure that your layers are grouped and named properly for use in Adobe Character Animator. What we'll do right now is go ahead and hide this character group and we'll start to draw out our puppet. One thing to keep in mind as you start to draw your puppet is to put each element of the puppet onto a separate layer. You may want to name your layers as you're going along to ensure that you don't get confused. So this would be the right eye. this will be the left eye. What I'm going to have you do now is pause the tutorial and finish making your character in Photoshop. When it comes to the mouth, just focus on making a neutral mouth shape which can be like a straight line or something like that. When you come back to the tutorial, you'll finish making the rest of the mouth shapes. Now that you have your basic puppet created in Photoshop, let's go through the layer groups and names that we need to apply to have it work properly with Adobe Character Animator. You notice the entire puppet is in a group called plus character. The plus sign simply means to Adobe Character Animator that this layer can move and warp independently of other layers. As we delve into the layers, you'll see this being used. When we expand the character layer group, we see that there are two other layers contained within it, head and body, as well as four other layers that are needed. The neck layer, and then three shape layers. These three layers will act as anchor points within Adobe Character Animator. To be able to move these, first click on your pen tool and then click on the layer. You'll see a little X indicating where the anchor point is. If you're on a Mac, press and hold the command key. If you're on Windows, press and hold the control key. You'll then be able to move the anchor point to the position where you want for your puppet. The same is true for fixed right foot and fixed left foot. The fixed right foot and fixed left foot layers tell Adobe Character Animator that this part of your puppet will be fixed to the ground. Not having these layers will generate some weird results, so it's critical that you have these layers and that they're placed where your puppet's feet are. Let's take a look at the head group. You'll notice that there's another anchor point called origin. Following the instructions described earlier, move the origin to the point where the puppet's head touches the puppet's neck. You notice also that we've got a right eyebrow and a left eyebrow, again, with the plus sign in front, meaning that this can move and warp independently of the face. You'll then notice that we've got two groups for the eyes, plus right eye and plus left eye. Let's take a look at one of those. So in there we've got right blink. So if I was to show this, right now it's hidden. We can see that it's just a line. So if we want our character to be able to blink when we blink ourselves, we need to create this layer called right blink, which is, in my case, it's just a straight line. Let's hide that again. And we've got the right pupil which is a plus sign so that it can track our eye movement. We want this to be able to move independently of the eyeball. And we've got the right eyeball. The left eye group has the exact same structure as the right eye group. Let's take a look at the mouth group. Again, we've got the plus sign so this can move independently of the rest of the face. This is where we'll get into our complex mouth shapes. So the default is neutral. Then we've got smile. The smile shape is actually triggered by the web camera. So as you smile, your character will smile. And then we have a bunch of different sounds that Adobe Character Animator will use based on audio recognition. We've got D, we've got our A sound, ah, our F sound, our K sound, our L sound our M sound, 
our O and our ah sound, our th sound, and our woo sound, and then our surprise shape. This is also used by your webcam to be able to determine when this is shown. You need to have all of these mouse shapes within your mouth group to be able to properly have your puppet speak when you talk. Then we have our face background group. Again, you'll see that there's the plus sign. Let's take a look inside there. This is more of a free for all. It's not prescribed as to what layer groups or names you need to include within your face background. In my case, I've got the left and right sideburns. I've got the glasses, my face, and my left and right ear. If I hide the face background group, we can see what that consists of. And then we have our body group. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside our body group. So we've got two other groups within there, the right arm and the left arm, as well as our torso and shoes and our pants. So if I hide those, we can see what this consists of. So you'll notice that with the right arm and the left arm, there's a bit of an overlap to be able to ensure that when these arms do move in Adobe Character Animator, uh, that there is no kind of gaps. So make sure when you splice your arms, that you do have a bit of an overlap with where they connect to the torso. Let's take a look inside one of the groups here. Let's look at the right arm. So you'll see we've got our right arm and we have two other layers. We have our mouse track right, which is just the shape layer. Again, if we want to see what's on that, select the layer, go to our pen tool, we'll see the little anchor point there. This is if you want to be able to move your character's arms within Adobe Character Animator using your mouse, this is where you, you would put the tracking point. So again, with Command on your Mac or Control on Windows, click and move the mouse track anchor point to where it should belong for your puppet. And then we have our right hand image. Now I have something a little bit different than my left arm. Let's take a look at that group. So again, we've got the mouse track, we have our left arm, but then I have another group that I've created and the group name does not matter at this point, but inside that there are two hand images. So you'll notice right now if I take a zoom in here in this hand, that here's the regular hand image. But I also have an image I want to be able to swap out with that called pointer. So if I hide that, I can see that there is now a pointer hand. What you name your layer is not important, but it's what comes after the layer name which is important. In this case, you see I've got a bracket A exclamation mark bracket. This tells Adobe Character Animator when the A key is pressed on the keyboard that it will swap out the image, creating an animation to make a look at the puppet as pointing. You can swap the letter A with any other letter that you want on the keyboard to trigger the animation. That's an overview of the layer groupings and names you need to apply to your character to make it animate properly at Adobe Character Animator. Once you're done creating your character in Photoshop and you have all the mouse shapes and all the layers grouped and named properly, go ahead and save your Photoshop file as a PSD file and you can go into part two where we work in Adobe Character Animator.